Today, I'll be testing out five drum hacks that I found on YouTube. Will they work? Let's find out. This video is sponsored by Sweetwater. Nothing beats the feeling of a Sweetwater box showing up at your door. I've been checking out some different cymbals recently and noticed that most of my rides sound a bit too bright and that I need something darker in the catalog. So I hopped on a Sweetwater and decided to check out this 21 inch Zildjian K Custom Special Dry Ride. I'll be using this symbol throughout the video along with some other Zildjians, so if you're interested in checking out this symbol for yourself or any of the other symbols that I play, you can head over to Sweetwater by following the links in the description. Now let's test out these drum hacks. So first up, this comes from Dead Man Producing. Let's watch. A quick hack to change your kick drum sound in a heartbeat. This is my regular sound. Sounds like a bass drum. You can get a more boomy round sound. All right, we're getting that boomer bass drum. Sound by adding this regular foam windshield for a dynamic microphone. Put it inside a sock. Why you want to put it in a sock is because I learned. I don't know if I have a sock that looks that cool. Will be destroyed when it's uh, hit between the drum head and the beater. And you just put this on your beater. Alright, so we'll be changing the sound of our bass drum using a one screen from a mic. I'm pretty sure I have a thick boy from a 7B. That should do. And now let's just grab a sock. Alright, next up we have one from Drum Beats Online actually. Sup Gabe? Alright guys, so this drum hack is a really fun one and it's also cool because you get two for one. You're gonna take a drum head. Pretty sure I have a bunch of old heads. You're gonna cut this rim part off of it. So you just want the flat part of the head as one part and then you just want this metal rim part as the second part. We're gonna put this over our snare drum. Hopefully you all already know that trick. You're just gonna take this metal rim part from your snare head and you're just gonna put it over the cymbal like that. Gabe, that is a revolutionary idea. Whoever thought there would be a buy one get one free coupon for drum hacks. So let's go to the dead head box and find some heads. I'm gonna use a small ring on the hi-hats. Spoiler, it did not sound good on the hi-hat, so I'm gonna put it on the crash. Then I have a 14, I'll use the ring on the ride cymbal. And then let's cut them up.
Now this next video, I actually saw it back in high school and I'm kind of surprised I never talked about this before or showed it in a drum hack video because it's so simple, but we're here now, so let's take a look. Take this and practice pad. It says rim suck. A Walmart sack. It has to be a Walmart sack or it won't work. I don't have a Walmart bag. We're already failing. Put the pad in the Walmart sack and it sounds like a snare drum. Who would have thought putting a pad inside of a Walmart bag would make it sound like a snare? So this is pretty simple. Let me just get a snare line together and we'll give this a test. Now we have yet another bass drum beater hack. This one's been around for a while, I think. The first time I heard about it was on a forum and they were talking about Vinnie Paul and how he got his bass drum sound. But I came across a video from Kurt Biscara, or Kirky B talking about this one. Coins part three. Ah yes, the annual salary of a drummer laid out on a snare drum. So for this hack, here's what you need. A pair of scissors, some mole skin with sticky on the back and a quarter. So just put the coin attached to the mole skin and apply the mole skin to the kick drum head where the beater meets the head, hitting on top of the coin. I don't have any mole skin, but gaff tape should hopefully work. And then uh, I have a bunch of change in my car, so hopefully I can find a quarter. Apparently I only have pennies. Actually, we need two. And last, I don't remember exactly where I saw this. I think it was some Facebook group and someone just found like an Acrylite or a Supra or some other drum with a bead on the center of the shell. And he was like, hey, why is there a belt on the inside of the shell? A V belt like this, not one for your pants. And someone replied to that photo saying that people would put these belts inside of the shell either around the center bead or the bearing edge. I honestly don't remember what it was in the photo, but he said that they'll put it inside of the shell to basically dampen the shell and make like a mega muffle and like deaden the ring of the shell essentially. So I have this Supra that I parted together and I just bought a new belt for my mower. So I have the old one. First, I'll try cutting that up and maybe gluing it back together. And if that doesn't work, then we'll go to plan B. The profile of this belt, it's like a V shape. So the idea is to take this belt and basically turn it inside out and then cut it the same length so that the V fits inside of the bead inside of the shell. And even though the bead is round, this should fit inside. Okay, maybe it doesn't fit inside. All right, well, forget that thing. On to plan B. Okay, so my plan B was to bring this to a store and have someone help me find a belt that fit inside this thing. But before I did that, I decided to just measure the inside to get a rough idea of how big it should be. And then after doing that, I decided to just order one online to see if I was close and uh, I got pretty lucky. So if we flip this inside out and then put it inside the shell, it's actually a pretty good fit. It could be a little bit tighter, but for testing purposes, I think this will work just fine. And I know I said I was gonna use the Supra, but instead I actually have a Ludwig Rocker, which has a steel shell. So hopefully that will be a bit more ringy than the Supra and we'll hear more of a difference with and without the belt.
Honestly, there isn't too much of a difference in sound. Maybe if I put it on the top bearing edge, it would do more, but I could not get it to stay in place. So who knows, maybe I'll have to revisit this at some point. But either way, these were some fun hacks to test out. And if there's any others you want to see, then drop a comment and I'll make a part two.